Okay, it's Monday. It's a new week. Uh, what have we gone? 24 days without rain. Day 25 without rain. And counting. Okay, day 26 without measurable rain. And oh, it's going to be a hot one today. Here it is, October 2nd. And it's going to be in the mid 90s today. That's a pretty pretty darn hot for October in uh, Maryland. Okay, day 27 without rain, but hey, it is much cooler today than yesterday. Almost 100 degrees yesterday, uh, today I think in the low 80s, so TGIF. Yes, thank God it's Friday. Uh, day 28 without rain, as you can probably see. Uh, it is breezy, uh, so going to be cooler today than yesterday, only in the 70s today, uh, but uh, very breezy. It's going to uh, cool off today. Humidity is finally going to leave out of here, so that's a good thing. Okay, day 29 without rain. Oh boy, it's a little bit cooler this morning, 53 degrees, so uh, shaving my head a couple days ago wasn't such a great idea need a hat on okay you know the drill here we are day 30 without rain it's sunday morning it is cloudy uh we do have a chance of rain though monday tuesday wednesday and thursday this week 30 to 40 percent chance so we'll see how that goes well okay monday morning october 7th this is uh day 31 without measurable rain there was a chance of rain yesterday, but nope, that didn't happen. Uh, there is a chance of rain today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. Um, sun did come up, a few clouds in the sky, but uh, as I said, chance of rain this afternoon, so fingers crossed, let's hope for the best. Okay, Tuesday, October 8th, and we finally got rain. We had, uh, looked me up about 12.30 this morning. I uh, had about a quarter of an inch of rain, so the 31 day streak without rain is over. Uh, cloudy skies this morning. Oh, it's quite breezy out here, low 60s. Uh, chance of rain today, most of the day, but it doesn't appear we're going to get much. We're in between. Um, we're in between a coastal storm out in the uh, Atlantic, and it looks like maybe a. A line of showers to our west and we're just kind of in between them and they're kind of fighting each other on on which one's going to push the other one out so i don't think we're going to get a whole lot more rain if any uh today but uh, we'll see well these uh rainy days have been a bust uh, all we got was about a quarter inch of rain yesterday morning, nothing overnight. It doesn't look like we're getting anything today either. Oh well, life will go on. It looks like I have some soybeans ready to cut here. Uh, these are not the first I've planted. Uh, but it looks like they're going to be the first that I cut. Um, I'm seeing pods with nothing in them. There's one of them there. Here's another one. This one has only got one, one in that one, two in that one, three in that one. So it is, uh, they look good. These soybeans uh, dried are standing about waist high. But here's, here's the interesting part here. There are no pods the first 10 inches or so uh, on, the, on the stalk. And you can see that throughout. Nothing the first 8 to 10 inches. So that is really going to hurt us. Of course, uh, these empty pods one in that one uh it's a only one in that one
I've already heard reports of uh, some other guys in the area. Full season soybeans, 10 to 20 bushels to the acre. That's not good uh, because these look like uh, when you ride by the, the windshield view, uh, you would guess they were in the 50 to 60 bushel range, uh, maybe better than that. But no, when you get out here in the field and really start looking at them and inspecting them, that's not what they are. I don't think these are as bad as, as 10 or 20 bushels to the acre. I think they'll do better than that, but definitely not uh, bin busting soybeans here. Hey, I'm getting new teeth. Well, no, not me because I already got my new tooth a couple months ago. But I am uh, putting some new teeth. Uh, here on the header to get ready for soybeans and you know this invention here is one of the greatest inventions since sliced bread in my opinion or since the internet or the iPhone uh, it's this simple to replace these a uh, well takes a 7 16 inch wrench, what is that, a quarter inch nut, uh, to unscrew, take off the old one, put on the new one, and screw the nuts back on. Wham, bam, thank you ma'am, and that's all there is to it. And just like that and it's done. In the old days we had rivets that you had to first cut off. Of course you always did this in the field. That's when these things went bad. Uh, you always did it in the field. So you had a BFD, I mean a BFH and a chisel cutting the old rivets off then punching the old rivets through, putting the new one on. Then you had to get something up underneath of here to bang the old rivet and get it back into place to hold it on and it, it probably took 11 minutes and 33 seconds to change each one of these and now it takes 11 seconds to uh, change, oh, let me pay attention and put a new one on. Now it takes about 11 seconds to uh, change these. So much easier. One thing you can't do is really tighten them down. Uh, they do have um, plastics in the uh, in the nuts, uh, but if you put too much pressure on them, you will wring it off. Then you'll have to get the chisel out. But you don't need a BFH; uh, just any old hammer will do to to bang the old um, bolt out. And let me show you. Just a simple bolt uh, with the, um, yeah, whatever you call those on there to hold it up into place, bang it up through there, and there, you're done and ready to go. Uh, so I do have a guard that is a little bent out of shape here, so I will replace it with a new one. Most of the time, you don't even have to take the guards off to change these. Uh, just turn the knife in the right position. This one, because of the hold down clip on here, I did have to uh, take this particular one off. And I had to change the guard. an example of 
one that I just wrung off. Uh, it was loose, so I went to tighten it, and I guess it is rusty because it's loose. It got some rust around there, so it uh, did not tighten it, wrung off. Let's see if this one will tighten. Nope, wrong off. another way to do this. like that. Should have used this the first time. Okay, I've run out of nuts, so I I have some in the uh, combine, which is down in the barn. Well, that was a boring 23 minutes. I'm not sure how I'm going to edit this video, but we'll see. Okay. Other than uh, two nuts for that one, I think we're good. Did I mention how hot it got today? Uh, it is after 4 o'clock and it is still 98 degrees. I'm not quite sure if it hit 100, but currently it's 98 degrees according to my phone. Feels like 101 with the humidity. October 2nd. That is damn hot. Uh, but I have one of those big A fans. So it makes it feel like it's only 89.3 degrees. Yeah, let's dry out the armpits a little bit.
Okay, I'm just about done with the PM on the combine. Uh, the header and the truck, uh, they are already moved to the field. We've got one more thing to do, and that is to uh, blow out the air filter. Uh, no, I guess two more things. Blow out the air, fil air filter and then fuel it up. No, I haven't been drinking yet. Um, yeah, I probably could, though. It is after 12. Uh, it's uh, it's cloudy today, but uh, at least it is much cooler than yesterday. Um, but there is no rain in the forecast. It's just overcast with uh, with clouds. Well, clouds is overcast. Uh, so let me get the air filter blowed out and fuel it up, and uh, I think I can uh, cut soybeans. I do have a uh, trailer coming down to load old crop soybeans out of the bin. He is uh, dumping lime for me. Uh, I think they're dumping the last load today. Uh, they may they may have to bring one more tomorrow. Uh, four loads is what they were dumping. Uh, the farm where I had the corn, you saw me take the tractor and rake up there and clear an area for them to dump lime. Uh, so he's going to dump that load of lime, come down here, load soybeans uh, out of the bin, but they're last year's soybeans. Uh, okay, let me get this filter cleaned and uh, get moving. <laughs> I got a lot of grief when the wheel fell off the combine, you know, based on the comments that I wasn't doing proper maintenance, not greasing it, blah, blah, blah. Look, the wheels are the easiest things to grease on this combine. It's right there. I don't have to get down on my hands and knees. I don't have to get behind anything. I don't have to be a monkey and crawl up on anything. Those are the easiest things to grease on this combine. So if nothing else, they get too much grease. I grease those every time I grease the combine. Uh, whether it's once a day, once a week, depending on how much I'm using it. They get greased. And I always know when they have enough grease in them. So I'm putting grease here on the outer side where the hub is. So it's hitting the first bearing. That is the bearing that went bad on the other side. And there you can see it coming out of the seal. As soon as I see the first speck of grease coming out of the seal on the back side, I stop. So I have jacked this tire up just to check it to make sure it is okay. Uh, there is no play in the tire. The tire spins okay. As I said, I cannot shake the tire. There is no play. I hear nothing wrong. No grinding or anything as I spin this tire. This bearing did not go bad for lack of grease. As I said, it was the outside bearing that went bad. So the grease has to go through that outside bearing in order to come out the back side on the seal. Now what could have possibly happened is uh, it had too much grease and the pressure popped the cap off, but I doubt that happened either. Those caps are quite difficult to get off. They've never been off since I've had this machine. Um, so they don't just pop off to allow the dirt to go inside. I think it was just plain out failure on the bearing, regardless of whether it had enough grease or not, which I know it did. Um, it was just failure on the part of the bearing. The machine has uh, over 4,000 engine hours on it, so um, it's not a young machine. Uh, so it's just something that happens. I, I don't care. Okay, yeah, if, if you pull it apart every year and inspect it, but I doubt there is anybody that pulls hubs uh, 
off of their tires on the combine and checks wheel bearings every single year. I, I doubt if you hire the Deer dealership or the Case IH dealership, those guys that do the, the preventative maintenance, they come out to your farm in the winter and do the preventative maintenance on your machine and give you a checklist of what's going on. I doubt they pull caps off and check wheel bearings. Uh, it's just not part of regular inspection routine on a farm. Maybe in other industries it is. On a farm, I don't think that's the case. So uh, I just wanted to clear that up and uh, present my side of the story.